Have you ever wondered how the space shuttle gets into space? Probably not. You're probably at least familiar with the fact it has engines and rocket boosters and all sorts of crazy stuff like that. But still, those things just generate force. How does it get into space? Well, the answer is a little complicated, but it has to do with energy. And energy is the thing that we're going to be discussing in this next unit. We'll talk about types of energy, places that energy comes from, and how we can change energy from one type to another type, and if we lose any in that transition. So, let's go ahead and get started. Energy is the ability to do work. It's always related to motion. And so as this object sits here, it doesn't have a whole lot of energy. It's not doing anything right now. It's probably not going to move. But I have energy, and I'm able to move, and I can burn calories to cause something else to move, which gives us to a more clear physics uh, definition for energy. Energy is the ability to do work on something. Now, if you've done any physics in the past, you might realize that work is all about moving an object, specifically moving an object a distance. So I am going to use some of my energy to do work on this little space shuttle model. And I can lift it upwards. And as I do that, my energy is being transferred into the space shuttle. And so energy is something that flows between objects as work is being done. And while we'll still continue to kind of refine the concept of work and what it means to actually do work, we're first going to take a look at energy and how energy is conserved as it moves from one thing to another. One of the key things to know about energy is that it is always conserved. And what I mean by conserved is that we can't get rid of it. It always moves from one thing to another, but the amount of energy that we start with and the amount of energy that we finish with, if we're looking at the entire system, is always going to be the same. Now, some things can remove energy from a system, like friction, and we'll talk about friction a little bit more than we've already have. But for the most part, if we're looking at a perfect system, which is what we study in most of physics, energy is going to wind up being conserved. So once again, I can go ahead and burn calories, which is a form of chemical energy, to lift the space shuttle, and I can, which is going to give it what's called potential energy. And the amount of potential energy that it gained is equal to the amount of calories that I lost in that transition. So the energy is conserved. And while there's lots of different types of energy, one of the goals of this unit is that you should be able to start looking at situations and figuring out where is the energy going and how is it changing forms. Is it going from potential energy to kinetic energy or elastic energy or spring energy? All sorts of different energy types, but we always are conserving energy as we transfer from one to the other so that energy is never lost. Energy in general falls into two different categories. We have active energy and we have potential energy. And so even though there's lots of different types of energy that we're going to be dealing with, they all fall into one of these two categories. Active energy is, act is energy that's actually doing something at that exact moment. Energy like kinetic energy, which causes something to move. And potential energy, potential energy is energy that has been stored up for something. So for instance, if I have my space shuttle model right here, it currently has potential energy. It's not doing anything, but it has stored up some energy, and I know that because the moment that I was to remove my hand out from underneath it, it would suddenly start to fall. And as it falls, it picks up speed, which is a type which gives it kinetic energy. And by the time that it hits the ground, the amount of kinetic energy that it would have would be equal to the amount of potential energy that it started with. Once again, we're conserving that energy. So it's, all, it's often helpful to think about things in terms of active energy and potential energies. And while there's lots of different types, they all fall into these two different categories. Now there's lots of different types of energy, like I've said, and there's lots of different sources where energy can come from. And that's going to be the focus that we go into at the beginning of this unit, is looking at the types of energies and where do they come from. So, take a look at the notes that I've included, and I'll see you in class.